hundreds of volunteers joined the armed services and the merchant navy. Donations were made of money and other resources to help the war effort. I remember playing and singing war songs about Hitler and his colleague Goebbels about a part of his anatomy. <laughs> Watching films and listening to stories on the radio about the war. Reading comics and books written, one by my favorite author, W. E. Johns, about the adventures of the squad leader, Biggles, with pilots like Ginger and Algie, who really brought the action of war alive for me from the air. Then I left Barbados in September 1964 with my British passport for my UK adventure. I left in a charter flight that just made it before miraculously landing at London Heathrow, which was much relief to all of us, mainly through the turbulence and the age of the plane. We boarded a coach to be dropped off at our accommodation nearest to our allocated bus garage. And after driving all day around London, we finally reached the destination in East London, 343 Rumford Road, where four of us was met by the landlady, Mistress Folks, who welcomed us and briefed us of, our, of the house rules. There were six beds in the front room, and we were given the opportunity to choose. Then we received our woolen army surplus blankets. Our breakfast was a flask of tea and egg and sandwich, which was left on the table to be eaten in the morning. We were allowed to use the toilets, but not the bathtub. Some of my colleagues cried and wanted to return home. My army and seamen background prepared me better than my colleagues for the new condition. Plus, I only planned to spend five years and then return, hopefully, with my fortune. Uh, in addition to coming terms with the weather, especially the fog, I was confused that white people called me names like Darky, Coon, Monkey, being told to go back to the jungle, occasionally spat at, wanting to touch my hair for luck, and some even curiously seeking to find out if I had a tail. There was sort of a feeling that we were not fully human beings. Come to terms with seeing poor white people on the streets picking up cigarette butts, displaying different hygiene habits and dress codes, and even experience what I call the false smile was really unreal. I honestly did not know that you could smile without meaning it. As Britain was really recovering from the war, rationing had not too long stopped. There were clocks everywhere, people queued, and there were bomb sites all over the place. It was rough and tough, but it was exciting. We entertained ourselves at parties, blues dances, and pubs provided an important meeting place, not only for social entertainment, but also to share and gather information about what was happening at home, where houses were, and other things like that to keep us sticking over. Our relationship with the white community was not all negative. There were many acts of kindness and generosity I experienced. Friendships grew. We played a part in community activities when allowed to do so. And I found that those who had traveled were much friendlier. That's where my proudest moment as a youth worker I can share with you. It was leading a successful international youth year project, the Barbados, in 1985, where I took 12 young people and four staff to the island. We were sent off one Saturday.
start of the morning by the mayor of New Ham. He gave us our last wishes. The British High Commission in Barbados commented that the young people were great ambassadors for their country and improved relations between the UK and Barbados. I thought that was quite an achievement, where how young people at the time were being vilified and treated as dangerous. And here come some young people from Chinatown, lying abroad and carrying out themselves with the British High Commissioner, speaking so highly of them. Also, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Lindsay, even commended on the young people the young people themselves, when they achieve something where they never felt it was possible, that gives them the confidence to go forward and take on anything that comes in their way. Part of the project, we ask young people what they wanted to do when they become adults. And one young lady said she wanted to be a doctor. And she came back to the 30th anniversary, and she was a doctor. It is rewarding to see many young people I work with now growing up and living successful lives. Living and working for 57 years in this borough and being blessed with a family and a wife of now 52 years is worthy of a celebration and it makes me feel proud to be here and alive. Making a home in New Ham has been a significant part of my life. 